Since starting my YouTube channel, I get a lot of questions about this little sewing case. And so I thought I'd share with you today what I actually like to keep in my sewing case. Starting over on the left here, we have my selection of needles. Now I tend to keep them in three sections, not really with any rhyme or reason, but I have all of my largest needles in the pebble, which just happens to fit really nicely under this piece of elastic here. I also have my Hawthorne and Heaney label and uh, just a piece of pink fabric here. I've got my curved needles from Goldwork over here along with a very large eyed chenille needle um, that I use for plunging. So this one is more sort of gold work oriented. And then down the bottom here, I just have a couple of embroidery needles along with a spare uh, timbre hook. That's what this one in the middle is, if you can see that there. And a tapestry needle. Um, so I've got a good selection of needles as and when I need them. Sharps and embroidery needles are my preference, uh, but I've got a variety here for the various jobs I might have to do. Next up, I have my timbre hook. This is the luxury timbre hook from the London Embroidery School. It is my favorite timbre hook. It feels really solid and I love the work down the bottom here, as well as how it feels in my hand, the way that this little end piece um, fits into my hand and the shape of my particular hand and size of my hand. I've said hand a lot there, um, is, is really perfect basically. And so you'll definitely see this if you check out some of my timbre based videos. Although uh, they do also sell and I also have um, a timbre hook of this style, which is more of their sort of standard style, which is also lovely to use as more of a kind of entry level. You know, it's just a little bit less fancy basically, um, but definitely also does the job. I'll come to this guy in a second. I keep this loaded with my fine timbre hook, the medium one being spare over here. Um, again, that's just my personal preference and I think from the last project that I was working on was uh, with a Madeira thread, um, which is the water piece. There's lots of videos on that if you're interested and want to see some timbre in action. And so because that's such a fine thread, um, I used a very fine needle. Now, these look really lethal. And these are my super sharp tweezers, but I really couldn't be without these. Um, I tend to use these more for machine embroidery um, because you can just pick up the tiniest of threads with them. They're really precise and they're also great for like picking out small things that you might have problems with. Oh look, there's a spare needle there. Um, that one got away. So yeah, really precise, love them can't really get on with any other tweezers now. I've been broken. You can see uh, there's a little bit of wear on these ones. They've been highly loved. Um, and I do sort of reshape the points to better suit my needs, which you can do with these. Again, these are also available on the London Embroidery School. Now, thimbles. I have two, and this isn't just because I am excessive, but I discovered these brass open-sided thimbles and they were just a real game changer for me. As you can see, uh, one of them is more worn than the other and uh, that is because when I got mine, I was like, this is a revelation because if you have longer nails, it just sits really nicely and doesn't interfere with your nails. You can just get on with doing what you're doing. Uh, you've got the dimply section for catching the end of the needle. You've got this little lip in case you sometimes uh, need extra pressure to push with. Um, and round the back, it is adjustable, although this one is a small, as you will see, they both are um, smalls. Uh, and it, yeah, it is adjustable, but also because of that, the overall shape isn't perfectly round, and so it does mold to your finger and therefore can't slip around your finger, which I think is just excellent and is something that I never got on with with thimbles before this. So uh, then I got another one because I liked it that much. And this is because when I sew, I sew with both hands. So you may have noticed that, uh, particularly in like my monogramming videos and that sort of thing, 
I stitch with my left hand on top and my right hand underneath and I pass the needle through the fabric between without sort of bringing my hand around the frame each time to make a stitch. Both hands do the stitching. Therefore, both hands, when I'm using a needle that, you know, could lightly impale me, um, I like to have the two thimbles to protect both hands. Then over this side, I also have another uh, timbre handle, as I mentioned earlier, but this one doesn't have a timbre hook in it. It has a very fine needle, um, which is also known as a pricker. And this is what I use for pricking and pouncing my drafts, uh, like you will have likely seen in many of my previous videos. Um, as it is a, a favourite method of mine, it is the traditional method for transferring embroidery designs onto fabric by passing a very fine powder, also known as pounce, through the holes that you make with a pricker. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, check it out. And this is a really great way of doing it. You can just do it by, you know, holding a pin. That is absolutely fine. But for me, this is a lot more comfortable to use a timbre hook in this fashion, and it gives you the opportunity to do a much bigger draft without um, tiring your hand by holding this very small area like you would need to do with a pin. But you know, if you've only got a pin to hand or you're trying it for the first time and you want to see if you like it or not, try it out with a pin and see how it goes and maybe think about one of these later on if that suits you. Unsurprisingly, there is a pair of scissors in here. These are London Embroidery School's brass scissors. I think they're really great for being nice and sharp, for being nice and angled. Uh, I quite like a short blade, so actually the you know amount of cutting space that you have. These are really nice for just cutting threads and I find that they're able to get into small places. I do have lots of pairs of scissors um, and use different ones for different purposes. I'm also quite keen on a curved pair of scissors, generally speaking, um, but you've got to use what's right at the time and these fit really nicely in this case as a day-to-day -day pair of scissors. They are a great choice. Next to that sits my Malore. This is a gold working tool um, and is used for laying the various metals of gold working pieces. So you can see it's got a pointed end, although the pointed end is rounded off so that it doesn't damage your metal, but you can use that to sort of like reshape bits of it um, in a smooth and controlled way. It also has the rounded end at the back that you can use for kind of like smoothing off curves um, and just sort of encouraging again the metal into place. It will make more sense when you're doing it. Um, you will see this used in my gold work videos, so do have a look at that if you're interested in how these get used but um, they're a really nice traditional tool and they, I don't know, they look quite fun, I always think, Malors. Now we have another laying tool next to this, which is a stiletto. Now, similar to the Malor, but not for gold work specifically. This can be used for any kind of sewing. It does have a pointed end, which again is slightly rounded, but it's more pointed than the Malors because this may be used for kind of encouraging stitches into place, which are a little bit more forgiving with pressure than metal is. It won't get damaged as easily, um, and also it might generally be smaller. Uh, it also has the rounded end, which as you can see, kind of is angled, again, for sort of smoothing edges off, um, and it, that itself does taper to be flat. The, the body of the stiletto is rounded but it tapers at the end which again is really nice and I think that the size of this again really works for me it sits nicely into the flat of my hand there when I'm poking so it doesn't sort of tire my hand out when I'm working with it for a long period of time. Finally we also have another stiletto now this one is um, a vintage piece as you can probably tell there is some discoloration and um, rusting almost to the tip of it but it is a lot sharper than the other and so I do like to keep this one I don't work with it as much um, but it's just a nice piece and I like to look at it with its mother of pearl handle down the bottom here um, it's just really pretty and 
it reminds me of you know where embroidery has come from um, when I'm producing new things and sort of keeps me a little bit grounded uh, but it is fun to work with at times and the extra pointiness of it can be useful when I need something sharper than this Malore. So quite conveniently most of these pieces have little elastics that they can sit into to hold nice and firmly within the case and so when I shut it up everything stays where it's supposed to. The case itself was actually a manicure kit um, that just happens to be a really great size for my embroidery pieces so I took all of the nail equipment out of it and put my embroidery equipment in instead. A couple of the pieces just float loosely in there. Um, you can see that the two extra lots of needles are held in place by the pebble. It's not sort of probably exactly the design that I would pick for myself, but um, it's quite useful that it's slightly padded so you can stick pins in the outside when you need to, but I try not to do that because they just end up stabbing me instead. But in a bind, uh, you can stick some pins in the outside too. Um, I just think it's really useful that it's nice and flat and it just sort of pops open um, when you want to get whatever you need. I wouldn't be without it now. It's really nice that it's a case in this way and that everything stays in place. I think it's really useful. Those are my favourite bits to have in my sewing case. I hope that answers some of the questions that you guys have been posing to me. Um, and I do love to hear your questions, so if you've got any more for me, let me know. Um, I'd be really interested to hear from you what you'd like to know about in the embroidery world, and if I can help you out, I certainly will. Thanks for joining me today, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.